I guess it's online now. Um, so I did my shampoo. I'm gonna start by the end. Uh, today I'm speaking about hair and my hair. So they are still a little bit wet. So I'm gonna show you first, uh, like this, I use this opportunity to dry them. How I dry them. I never use a blow dryer. I just take a dry towel and um, I start like that. And after what I do, I put my head upside down and I take the towel and I squeeze them. I squeeze them if I want to have a kind of natural ondulation. I do this for a while. I can use a little bit of oil for the point. This is an oil that is made by one of my friends. I will give you all the references after. And it's a mix of oil, it's quite really nice. So I use a little bit like that. There is lavender in, and I think lemon, it's really a nice smell and nice texture. And after I continue to do that, I continue to dry them, squeezing them like that. It's easier when I do it stand up. So I squeeze them like that. And it gives like some natural uh, ondulation. But it's better when you do it stand up with your head upside down and you do it like that. I'm gonna try here, maybe on my knees better. So you do them, you take them like that and you squeeze them, squeeze them. And it's good, you can also massage your scalp, moving your scalp. So I'm sure a lot of you are doing that. So people ask me what I do. So it's what I do. I don't, nothing really special. So like this, they can have a natural uh, ondulation. Uh, so the subject about hair is quite really interesting because you have to take a lot of things in consideration. Hair, it's also, you know, up your heredity. Um, my mother, she is 87 and she has much more hair than me. And she has much less white hair than me. She's more like pepper, salt and pepper. Um, it was my grandmother, father's side, who was totally white. So, you know, heredity for the texture of hair and the quantity, the quality of hair, it's a very important factor. And this, you know, you have people who are old and they still have a lot of hair and you have people aging who lose their hair. So, um, what can you do? Me, what I do, I have a tendency, my hair, uh, when I was young and they were black, when I was a little girl, in fact, I have to go back on time. I started to have, I had hair like maybe more like Asian hair, very straight, very black, black blue. I still have some really dark in the back, so you can see my hair were dark and even darker than that because, so this is the remnant I have of the dark hair. Um, they were very, very black, and um, as I was, you know, when I was a little girl, my face was quite round with my black hair, very straight like that. I had this cut, you know, like the fringe like that, the bang, and like that. Everybody thought my mother was Asian. And uh, I had this round face with my eyes a little bit, you know, uh, in Almond. Um, I started to have the first one 
silver hair at 11 when I had puberty. I had my period very young and I started to see the first one there, just in the middle. And I loved them. And for me, it was like magic coming out of my, of my head, you know? So it was uh, funny because my mother was telling me, don't pull them because if you pull one of them out, 10 are gonna come. So me, I was like excited and I started to pulling them. My hair were very straight and very th thick, but like heavy. And I was like, I would love to have a lot of volume. I would love to have, because my mother has a lot of hair. And I was like, oh, all my childhood and I was younger, I wanted to have more hair. So in my twenties, I remember I was pepper and salt. I had more white hair and uh, in mid twenties, one time I decided to do, um, I don't know how you say this in English, in permanent, it's like you do something uh, to curl them, but not to curl them here, just at the roots to have roots higher, to have more volume. It has been a disaster. I went back to the hairdresser after and I said, you know, now my hair were like burnt. I said, now you cut everything. And from hair here, I had that. So, and I loved it. I discovered that with my short hair, very short, it was quite really nice as well. So this can be a possibility for people who want to do transition because people ask me if I did transition, how I did it. I never tra did transition because I never dyed them. But for me, if I had to do transition, I will be really radical. I will shave my head because I will have immediately the benefit of touching real natural hair and to see the different style I can have as much as they grow. It's quite exciting because they can be like that and you can put oil and you can play with that and it should be a nice feeling. I remember I love when I had my short hair to feel them, but sometimes I say, oh, I'm gonna cut them, but I love the texture of long hair. And also I think it's something else I will speak about later, about hair, that is very interesting. So I started to have this first white hair and uh, my mother was telling me, you should do something. And me, I was like, okay like dying. I was working when I was teen. I was working in summer in, uh, as apprentice in a hair salon and I had to put the dye on the head of women and I was wondering how I could stand that because for me it was like oh I could I was like sick and I was wondering how they can put this on their head. So for me it never crossed my mind that I will dye my hair one day. Never. It's something that was like nature gave it like that it's great i love it when i was teen it was also a way to be a little bit like against you know rebel so it was my way to be but deep inside i really liked them it was not something that was bothering me at all it's never bothered me and um, i uh, i was wondering why my mother was bleaching her dark hair in platinum was suggesting to me that I should eventually dye them. It was nonsense to me. So time passed, so I never dyed them and I grew and it has been gradual. I never had white hair from one day to another. It has been through stages. And I must say that maybe from 15 years from now, 10 years from now, I preferred how they were less white. They were like all different shades, ombre. When they are wet, we can see a little bit, but now they are very white in the front. 10 years ago, there is this picture of me that has been all around the world with my denim jacket and my hair natural. And they were so beautiful, all these shades, ombre. And so I, people wonder, how do I do? In fact, I don't do anything special. This is the thing. I never blow dry them. Now, since many years, I don't curl iron them anymore because I realized that they become yellow just by the heat. Uh, I don't use any product as well, like uh, this for humidity or all these 
product. I don't use any of these to style and all that. I think hair, what is very important, it's what you eat. What you eat, uh, the way you, you favorize healthy fat. This is very, very important. Because if you do diet and you suppress fat, your skin and your hair cannot be healthy. This is a reality. But you have to trust the process to get informed, go online about healthy fat and get informed about that. Because if you feel guilty to eat fat, there are chances that the fat that you because if you feel guilty to eat fat and think this is gonna make you fat, the only the idea to think about that gonna make you fat. So it's a question, like I said always, it's a question of mindset. What is your mindset? Now, there is for me a kind of logic, a common sense. Less I, I am obsessed with my hair, better it is. I let them doing their life like this. Now they dry by themselves. When I want to tie them, it's very simple. I don't traumatize them. I have a stick. This is yak bone. I found this on eBay. So I have these sticks, natural, and I just turn them. I can show you, it's very easy. Nothing special. I just pull them back twist them like that and like that it's the only thing I do so I don't have many hairstyles sure uh, I look a little bit always the same but I don't care actually I absolutely don't care so this is for me the most the easiest way to pull my hair back I don't have this pins or things or uh, rubber band or anything. I just said that. So this is what I do. So you see, it's just a stick and it's a beautiful object as well. It's really nice. So that, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, I will do uh, also a video where, because this is going to be long, I'm going to have a part where I show some product, but I'm not here to sell product because what I want to tell you as well, the thing with product, as we are all different, our hair are different. The only way to know if it works for you, is to try yourself. Because something that can be nice for me, maybe will not work for you. I never found up to now one single product that is miraculous for white hair. My hair are a little bit yellow, maybe you see it here. What I discovered, I use mostly shampoo that are, you know, without chemical or sulfite or this kind of thing. You can find anywhere, even in supermarket. I don't use very expensive product. I receive product that I try I rarely found something that I really like. I have not found. Because if I found, I will let you know. But there is no miracle cure. What I discovered, because one day I was really, what I can do? I tried with, you know, shampoo to take off the yellow. But they cover. They don't take off the yellow. So sometimes I use some of them. A friend of mine told me once I should try the Joico brand. I tried. They are great i think there is nothing they don't do miracle but they are not bad to my hair so sometimes i use them uh, i use uh, over like a brand i'm you know since more than 25 30 years i use fito fito it's a brand of product from hair this is a fito argent for white hair so i use this one and i have over shampoo and conditioner also that are organic I cannot give you a list. It depends on the country where you are, you will find some or not. It's up to you to go and to do your research. This, I cannot do it for yourself. Now, I have a friend recently who sent me, and it's a very nice brand of organic product made in California, who sent me this 
is a shampoo in soap. I tried it twice, it's really nice. And this is very convenient. And also now I think what is important is to minimize packagings. And this is quite a solution. Uh, if we, each of us, start to take soap instead of liquid soap and all these things in can, in plastic can, to shower and shampoo soap like that, it will be much less plastic around, much less. So this is a choice. May I use soap, like soap like that since ever? I don't have all this plastic bottle around. I just have that. I have several of them. This one, for example, I bought it in Corsica. It's with the milk of um, a donkey, female donkey, Anes, I don't know how you call that. And uh, with myrtle, it's a plant from Corsica. And I'm sure I can use this for, to do a shampoo without problem. So soap can be also a way to do a shampoo. Now, where it's more tricky, it's about conditioner. So maybe what it's possible to do, it's to take things like, but you have to check online because I have not done it in that way, but maybe you can do your own and check online because for example, with karité butter, and uh, you can eventually do something great, like a mask after your shampoo. It can be take a time to apply a little bit, but maybe once a week you can do that. And this can be a conditioner. You don't need to buy a conditioner in can as well. Um, I do some masks sometimes with karité. I love very much or she butter. I love this butter and you can buy them online and you can make them melt in double boiler and you can apply when it's a little bit warm, not too warm to don't burn, but a little bit. And like this, it goes really well in the hair and it really nourishes the hair. And after you can wash or you can let maybe Sometimes I stay all day with that. Or after you can wash it again with a light shampoo. Um, what is, it's difficult to speak like that if I don't have someone to ask me questions. So what I discovered, I wanted to tell you some now, now a couple of years ago, as I was bothered to have my hair becoming, you know, with this yellow and things, I decided instead of two shampoo to do three. And I can tell you for me, it makes a big difference. My hair are dry anyway. It's my quality of hair. When I was younger, I were like straight and very, you know, like not very like that. Uh, now with white hair, I have more hair than when I was younger because the white hair, of course, they are thicker, they are, they are drier so they are less like you know flat so now um, what i do as well in my shower my head shower i have a filter a filter this is vitamin c filter so this can help to have less chlorine and i think this is very important for hair because they are porous especially when you take a hot water you do a hot shampoo it opens the little cuticles and everything goes in so what is great to have is less chemical as possible and the first chemical we have it's in the water so a shower filter can be a basic you change it uh, like each three four months me i forget sometimes but three four months you can change that and free shampoo I have conditioner, like I told you, organics that I use and I just let them pause at least two minutes. During that time, I clean my shower. Like this, I don't lose time. And after I rinse just with cold water, I don't rinse my hair after conditioner with hot water. I rinse with cold water, like this a little cuticle close and still keep a little bit of conditioner in. And my hair are always very soft and sure they are dry because it's the nature of white hair, but I love them like that. So this is one thing. And one thing you can do after you rinse a conditioner with cold water, you can take a little bit of water in a container with a little bit of apple 
vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Or white vinegar if you don't. May I use this one? And, uh, and that's it. And what you can do, uh, I'm thinking about, yeah, for washing and all that. Now, what I did yesterday, you saw maybe the video this morning, in live video, uh, where I had my hair all greasy. I do a mix with castor oil. Uh, castor oil, let me find, I will show you which one I take. I'm sorry, I totally forgot about that part. I let my oil in the fridge, so it's all hard now. But when I want a little, not too much. So I take castor oil. I have this one and I have another one also, black castor oil from Jamaica. So I take this or another one. But no matter the brand, you take organic castor oil from Jamaica, it's great. So I take that and I make a mix with essential oil. So for example, in this container, I have this of castor oil and I put like 10 drops of rosemary, in, five drops of, I, I, it's just how it comes. Five drops of lavender, a little bit of helichrysum. I mix all that and I put that on my roots and on my scalp and on my hair. And I keep this all night. I, the ideal would be for me to do it once a week. I'm lazy, I forget, I do it maybe twice a month. This is the only thing that works to make your hair healthy and your scalp healthy. For me, I don't believe in all these fancy things. I'm trying things. I receive a product and I'm trying because I will never speak about a product if I don't like it, if I don't have a result. I received some months ago a supplement. So me, I don't take a lot of supplements. I'm not really fan of that, but I received this one. I will send you, I will write the link. And I tried it in a couple of months, it's caps. And before trying it, I was wondering if I really need this one. So what I do, if I have a doubt, I am testing that. I have a friend I work with since 18 years, he's in Paris. So I tell him, I give him the name. I say, can you test if my energy is okay to take that? If this will not lower my energy? Because what is going on, you can have a good product. So I ask him and he told me, first he tests if the product is good. He said, this is a good product. And after he tests, if my energy is going down with that, because it can be a good product and your energy can go down, or if my energy, my body is okay with that and it gives a plus to my body. And he told me, and this gives you a plus. So I took it since two months. And I must say that I always had little hair growing because this was one of the things when I was, uh, you know, when I was working, it was always this little hair were bothering the hairdresser because it's not so clean and neat when you do photogra fashion photography or beauty shots, you know. But me, I always had this little hair, but I noticed that I have a little bit more, especially here where this was the part where I, has, I have less hair, this part, but this is hereditary. In my family, in family it's like that. So this, I have new, little hair growing and I have the feeling my hair are more uh, lifted and my nails. This I really notice a difference on my nails. The good thing I noticed as well is that I started because me I don't like to take any things every day. I'm really like it's bothering me. So I start I notice that when I take something and I forget it, I know that it's because my body don't need it anymore. But this, I realize that no problem, every day I take it, I don't forget it. So 
I see in this that my body like that. Now I decided to do a cure of three months and I'm gonna stop because I think also it's good for the body to have a break. What I do when I take this thing, the supplement of any kind or some even about food, I give a break. One day a week I don't take anything and if I feel to have only juice or soup or fruits, one day a week I do that. Usually it's a Sunday. I try to do once a week a day where I change totally what my routine of every day and to make my body like desiring again to go back to it. And for example, with coffee, it's the same. I take black coffee, I love it every morning. And after like maybe five, six days, like, oh, the coffee has not the same taste. I'm not like desiring it. So I stop until I feel the desire again. And I think this is a good barometer because your body knows when it's overloaded. So if it was an overloading with the supplement, my body would know and would make me stop to take it. So this is a, it's a good way in general to, to check if it's right for you or not. If you don't have someone who can check in energetic, that is the best because you, if you take supplement without knowing, feeling really yourself, if you really need, and, but for that you have to have a very deep connection that I have. But sometimes I wonder, because sometimes it's not about Oh yeah, I feel I have to take it. It's also how long I'm going to take that thing. So I asked my friend, I say, can you check? I feel I want to take this, but can you check how long I'm going to, my body wants to have it? And like this, he can check and he can uh, tell me, oh, your body asks to take three weeks and you stop and you take this amount by day. Sometimes it's surprising. Uh, it's like that, but once I felt to take vitamin C and he told me, oh, but your body has to take this in the evening and three doses. And I was like, wow, I will not sleep. I slept like very well because my body had the energy during my sleep to repair totally. So like that, I had a very deep sleep with vitamin C. So this is the way I do it. Now, what else I can tell you about hair? Uh, so I will put this in uh, the reference on my page. Uh, one thing that is important, now my hair are wet, but when they are dry, what I do, oh yeah, I do also this. A lot of you know this, coconut oil. I can do a mask like I did uh, with the um, castor oil. I can do a mask with that. I can add some essential oil. I warm it a little bit or I double boiler it to make it liquid. And I can let that soaking. If I'm under the sun, if I go at the beach, I can put that and after the shampoo and the hair are very, very soft. So coconut oil doesn't cost a lot of money. And uh, in fact, it's a very good thing to do. There is also a coconut oil that is fractionated. And like this, it stays always in the liquid state. So this can be a base for you for, to do a kind of composition of organic essential oil with the base of the coconut oil fractionated. Like this, it stays liquid. And you can have that to make your hair a little bit shiny and maybe like a nice scent of lavender or rose or the one you like. Uh, what is important as well is to have a good brush. This is known since the era, age of time. Brush your hair. You will be amazed about the dust at the end of the day that you can get out of your hair. Like this, they can breathe, your scalp can breathe. And to brush your hair, you have to do it as well, upside down. So now they are wet, it's not the same, but you have really to put your head down and to brush from the skin. Because when you brush from the skin, I don't know if you see, from the skin and upside down, and you brush by stroke.
and you do that everywhere on the top and you bring the blood in fact you bring the circulation blood toward your scalp and after when you have done that you can beat your head with your nails everywhere one minute and you do that and in fact this is my acupuncturist current acupuncturist who told me to do that it's increased the blood flow because what is important head it's up there and the, with the attraction all the blood when we are stand up goes down so yoga is a good practice to have all the blood flowing especially if you do headstand or this kind of thing but every evening me i brush my hair with that very nice quality brush it's an investment but it's worth it i have it since more than 10 years coarse hair of boar nice wood and i brush so i brush the way i show you when they are dry it's easier than when we are wet and for that because after I'm going to have a lot of hair, I have another kind of brush that is like that to clean my brush. And my brush, I wash it with my shampoo. Like maybe, you see already, there are like small dust. You don't know where I come from. I just wash my hair. But every day, you're going to see, you're going to take out that. And like this, you make your hair um, with the blood flow to really circulate in your scalp, scalp. And um, yeah, what is important, it's to activate, activate the blood circulation. Like this, all the nutrients can come here, especially if you have good food, everything gonna flow. So this is what I do. Now you know all my secrets. I'm thinking if I have forget, if I have forget something, um, cutting my hair, usually I was used to cut my hair myself. I have, usually when I do it, and I did it recently, it's not perfect. Um, I cut um, like one inch before full moon. Uh, when full moon, uh, when we go toward full moon, not after. They said it's increased the growth. So this is one thing. Uh, I don't go to hairdresser. I don't spend money on product, a lot of product. Uh, I uh, don't hair dry, I don't traumatize my hair with a lot of ironing and eating and things like that. In fact, I don't spend time on my hair and uh, I don't spend almost a lot of money neither. And uh, what else? It's, it's easy, <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that it's there, you just have to wash that's nothing else to do and just to do maybe this mask with castor oil and uh, you can also trim yourself I have this um, hairdresser that is really amazing who suggested me some years ago wanted me to wanted to cut my hair I say okay yeah, I have don't I have nothing to lose and it's true when I when he cut my hair, he was cutting my hair, my hair like really like alive and but now I've not seen him since months and I quite miss my cut. I, I miss my hair cut. But I did it myself. Last day I cut like my, almost three inches, all the point that were here. So voila. Um, yeah, I think I I did everything. Oh with the with the supplement, I got a small brush. And it's quite nice. It's a nice brush. It's not natural like the one I have, but for your bag, it's really convenient because you have this thing and it's protected and you can have it well in hand. So it's quite a nice tool as well. Uh, what else? Uh, maybe yeah, something that is not organic, but I love the smell, but I don't use it anymore because I have the feeling it yellow my hair. It's these things we have in France, la brillantine. 
Oh, yeah, I love that. Mm. It, rem it remember me in my childhood where my aunt and grandmother and mother were using that. It smells so good. It's blue, so it's not so bad for the hair, but it's true that mm, I'm gonna put a little bit. I love it. I love it a lot. Mm. If you have the chance to try that, if you have, you know, me, I have the feeling, I'm not sure, but I have the feeling it makes my hair becoming yellow with the light, with the sun. But uh, if you don't have white hair, oh, I love it. So this is nice. Um, about sun, I, I forgot to tell you about sun and um, when you go swimming at the ocean or the sea. For me, I think the salt is not a problem. It, do it doesn't yellow the hair. When I am in Corsica, and I can go at the beach regularly. My hair are very shiny and very clean, very white. It's not the salt that makes your hair becoming yellow. It's maybe more the light, especially if you put product on, but it's not the salt water. Salt water and sun, my hair are really silver and very bright. Voila, I have, I said everything now, I have to do it in French. <laughs> Bye.